tum 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 Rabbi Israel, Ben Eliezer, the Baal Shem Tov, the Besht. The Besht used to go for long walks all alone in the forest. No one knew what it was he did there. It was a complete mystery. So naturally, when one morning he asked three of his Hasidim, three of his followers, to go with him into the forest, they all agreed. They were... Reb Yechiel Michael. Oi! Oi! Reb Gershon, the Baal Shem Tov's brother in law. And Reb Sendril. The Baal Shem Tov and his three followers climbed onto a carriage. And the Baal Shem Tov drove himself. And as they were going along on their journey, it seemed as if the hooves of the horses and the wheels of the carriage were not actually touching the ground. They were flying through the air. And soon they arrived at the edge of a vast, wondrous forest that none of the Hasidim knew. Without saying a word, the Baal Shem Tov climbed down from the carriage, unhitched the horses, and started walking towards the forest, motioning for the others to follow him. But what about the horses? If we don't tie them up, they might run away. And if we do tie them up, maybe we're showing we don't have enough faith. Reb Sendril, Reb Sendril, in this place, it is not necessary to tie up the horses. But if you're really worried about them, you could always stay behind while we go into the fire. I was coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. The Baal Shem Tov and the three followers entered the forest. The trees were so wide it would take 100 years to walk around them. And they were so tall that their top branches pierced the highest heavens. Reb Yechiel Michael tried to peer into the branches of one very tall tree. He caught a glimpse of a nest. And from that nest flew a golden bird more beautiful than anything he'd seen before in his life. And he became lost in the height of the tree and the flight of the bird. And the others moved on, leaving him behind. And soon, they arrived at a beautiful circular pool of clear water. Without saying a word, the Baal Shem Tov glanced at his reflection. Rav Gershon followed him. And what he saw there was not his own reflection at all, but a kind of angelic presence. And somehow Reb Gershon knew that he was looking at the reflection of his own guardian angel, and he became transfixed, rooted to the spot. And the others moved on, leaving him behind. And soon, they arrived at a cluster of shimmering trees, trees, trees that were shimmering as if they were on fire, and yet there were no flames. Reb Sendril stopped to explore the vision. He remembered the story of Moses and the burning bush. Flaming trees, burning, flaming trees. And so it was. Reb Sendril, Reb Gershon, and Reb Yechiel Michael were lost, lost in the mysteries of the forest. <laughs> <laughs>
Suddenly, they were all back in the house of study, where they had been before they set off on their journey. Confused, they looked to the Baal Shem Tov for an explanation. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he knew that they would not all make that journey. Some of them crossed the Red Sea, but they were not there at Mount Sinai to receive the gift of the Torah. And others crossed the Red Sea, and they were there at Mount Sinai, but still they never saw the promised land. And so it was when I led the three of you with me to paradise. The further we went, the fewer followed. And when I reached the tree of life, I was all alone. <laughs> 